When Final Fantasy VII released, it introduced gamers to a cast unlike anything seen before in the franchise, and such was their impact that many of them have been fondly remembered over the years. But even though they've now become an integral part of the wider canon, two characters were almost cut from the game, and the roles they filled couldn't have been more different. Whereas Vincent Valentine was quite sullen and melancholic due to all of the disturbing things he'd encountered throughout his life, Yuffie Kisaragi was quite the opposite, young, full of sass, and ready to say and do things that nobody else would. It made Yuffie an interesting prospect, and she followed in the footsteps of characters like Param and Realm, but the role she was meant to play saw significant change throughout development. As we discussed in our recent video about obscure Final Fantasy VII facts, in earlier iterations of the script, Yuffie was planned to be a bounty hunter in her early 20s who was tasked with tracking down both Cloud and Sephiroth. This role was then adapted to help Yuffie work with the ever-evolving narrative, but as the team faced considerable pressure to meet fast approaching deadlines, it was proposed that Yuffie be cut from the game entirely. In the end, the compromise was that Yuffie would need to be an optional character, and to accommodate for this change, modifications were made to how she appeared within the game. It saw Yuffie's presence diminished, and numerous planned scenes that would have seen her appear in earlier segments of the game were dummied out. To compensate, as the compilation of Final Fantasy VII built out, time was spent on fleshing out Yuffie's character, and as a result, she's featured in almost every game and media property that has been released since the original game. Throughout this video, we will explore that expanded lore, bringing everything together to show the entirety of Yuffie's journey, and we encourage you to stay with us until the end as we analyse the very essence of Yuffie as a character. Yuffie Kisaragi was born on the 20th of November 1991 during the Mu era as the daughter of Kasumi and Godo Kisaragi. As the ruler of Wutai, Godo was enthused about the birth of his child and no doubt dreamt of teaching her everything he knew, so that she would one day inherit the lands he had fought to protect. But within just a few short years, due to a series of unfortunate events, those dreams evaporated and were replaced by the necessity of survival and then a general sense of apathy. After the successful construction of a macro reactor in Mount Nebel, just north of the remote village of Nebelheim, Shinra were keen to continue their expansion. They wanted to create a vast network across the planet, and earmarked certain regional targets such as Gongaga, Junin, Modeoheim, Coral, and Wutai. Each location was selected for a specific purpose, and Shinra were keen to use manipulative tactics wherever possible to convince the local populace that their plans were altruistic. In the case of Wutai, Shinra proposed the Mako reactor be built far from the Wutai village in the Materia Cave and they believed that due to its remoteness, Godo would agree to its construction. But unlike the leaders of many of the other selected locations, Godo was not swayed by their false niceties. He did not feel as though Shinra's offer was all that compelling, and saw no benefit to allowing them to encroach on his territory, as his people were in no need of jobs or security, and in many ways they preferred to be disconnected. It was a fair stance, and Godo believed his refusal would be the end of it but he hadn't banked on the fanaticism of President Shinra. Desperate to take the next step in his company's evolution, President Shinra believed the Maka reactors were a crucial component. Not only would the reactors help Shinra to assert their dominance over the global economy, but there was also the belief that they would help Shinra to uncover the promised land. They were convinced that this would give them access to unlimited resources, and President Shinra held dreams of using those resources to build a new utopia, Neo Midgar. Such was the importance President Shin replaced on this objective that his executives knew that no was not an acceptable answer. And so, they kept trying to convince Godo that it was in the best interest of Wutai to allow Shinra to build their new Mako reactor. Their persistence, though, was not rewarded. Godo stood fast in his beliefs, he would not be bullied. Angered by Godo's stubbornness, Shinra decided that instead of attempting to use diplomacy to achieve their goals, they would need to use a show of force. But first, any sympathy towards Wutai had to be eradicated, as they knew that Shinra would look like an unnecessary aggressor. It saw Shinra launch a huge smear campaign against Wutai, painting them as an aggressor that needed to be eradicated to ensure peace. It led to a swell of support from across the land, and many able-bodied citizens were keen to conscript as they were worried that they were under threat. With the public on their side, Shinra declared war on Wutai not long after Yuffie was born, 
and it meant the happiness Godo felt soon eroded as thanks to his decision, Wutai was now facing an invasion force that outnumbered and outgunned them. But they did have one advantage, their ingenuity. It was true that Shinra held some of the world's most advanced technology and they had genetically enhanced super soldiers within their ranks, but they were all trained in traditional combat and were unfamiliar with Wutai. Godo hoped that their superior knowledge of the local terrain and specialism with espionage, deception and guerrilla warfare would give them an edge, and that hope held true, at least for a time. But even though the resistance against Shinra was going well, Godo and Yuffie were rocked by the sudden death of Kasumi through illness. It left Godo without a wife, and it left Yuffie without a mother. And with everything that was going on, it meant Yuffie ended up being raised as a product of her harsh and unforgiving environment. Over the next few years, Yuffie began to study the martial arts, and even though she was young, it was clear that she had a natural affinity for that particular lifestyle. This progress, combined with the fact that Yuffie was the daughter of Godo, led to her developing quite the ego. But as Shimra slowly started to grind Wutai down, owing to their abundance of resources and their continued focus on garnering support for their cause, Godo wasn't able to place much time on caring for Yuffie or nurturing her but he tried his best given the circumstances. It led to Yuffie becoming quite self-sufficient and aggressive as she just craved attention, and this was evidenced when Shinra undertook a mission to capture Fort Tamblin. Despite numerous hardships due to successive defeats, Godo had tried his best to shelter Yuffie from the perils of war and the strength of their opponent. He'd built his daughter up to believe that there was nothing she couldn't achieve, and it was with this mindset that Yuffie confronted Zack Fair who at the time was a second-class soldier and a very dangerous combatant. It was fortunate that Zack was kind-hearted, but Yuffie was oblivious, and when she attacked Zack with all her might, she was genuine in her belief that he could be defeated. Zack humoured her, feigning defeat, and when Yuffie departed, she believed that she had been the victor. Not too long after, Fort Tamblin fell, and with it, so did the last main pillar of Wutai's resistance. Realising there was now no hope for victory, Godo was forced to surrender, and Shinra made sure the terms were not all that favourable. Even though there were still pockets of resistance that refused to give in, what followed was the demilitarisation of Wutai. It led Godo to banning the use of materia across his territory, and for such proud people, this was a humbling experience. But there was at least one positive. As so much time had passed since the beginning of the war, Shinra now had no interest in building a macro reactor in the Materia Cave, and for the most part, they agreed to let Wutai manage themselves as long as they agreed to no longer actively pursue development of their warriors or undertake any action against Shinra that could be considered revenge. It led to Wutai becoming a shell of its former self. Its primary function became to attract tourists so that they could sustain some degree of normality, and this was something that antagonised Yuffie. She saw her father, the great Godo, reduced to nothing more than a puppet with no drive or spark left. And in the following years, Yuffie became more and more distant from her father. She just couldn't accept what had happened to her homeland and vowed to restore it to its former glory by continuing to use the old ways, even if her father would not. And in this regard, she received some good fortune. As tensions between Wutai and Shinra had softened, internal tensions at Shinra were rising. Genesis Rhapsodus and a large group of second and third class soldiers had deserted, and together with Lazar de Serius, the director of soldier, and Dr. Hollander, they formed the Genesis Army and declared war on Shinra. Avalanche, an eco-terrorist group, were also continuing to be a thorn in their side, and Rufus Shinra, the son of the president, was aiding anti-Shinra sentiments so that he could mount a coup against his father. One of these groups used the confusion to try and enlist the aid of Godo, who they hoped would be seeking revenge for what had happened. They shared with him a list of rare and powerful treasures that could be used to rebuild their strength, but as Godo no longer had an appetite for the fight, he chose to ignore the information so that peace could continue. Yuffie was dismayed by her father's reluctance to act, and chose to take matters into her own hands, but not without having some fun. After gathering additional intelligence by eavesdropping on Avalanche, who had taken up residence in Wutai, Yuffie fed information to numerous members of Soldier. She hoped someone would come along and do the heavy lifting so that she could swoop in at the last second to steal the treasure for herself. It turned out 
that only Zack Fair was either kind enough or gullible enough to go along with her plan, and after countless attempts at manipulation, Yuffie eventually succeeded, stealing the incredibly powerful Bahamut Fury materia. But after realising she had no idea how to use what she'd stolen, Yuffie ended up sending it back to Zack. Still, she wasn't about to be deterred so easily, Wutai needed to be restored. It saw Yuffie continue to eavesdrop on Avalanche, and she stumbled upon some horrible news. The Turks were planning to blow up the Pagoda. But in learning about these plans, Yuffie was complacent, and some Avalanche soldiers spotted her snooping around. A small chase ensued, and Yuffie was able to avoid capture thanks to a member of the Turks. Impressed, Yuffie inquired as to the source of their strength, and it was here that she learnt about Materia, and how it could be used to enhance one's natural abilities. After years of searching for a way to restore Wutai to its former glory, Yuffie believed Materia was the answer. Not only would they be valuable, but they could also be used to strengthen its citizens, allowing them to fight back. And it was with these points in mind that Yuffie decided to make it her mission to acquire as much Materia as possible, however she could. Based on this, Yuffie decided that due to the Materia ban, she would need to leave Wutai to undertake her mission. It led to her travelling the world in search of easy targets and rare treasures, and when she stumbled upon Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Aerith and Red Thirteen outside of Junin, she felt like they were the perfect marks. Yuffie convinced the group to let her join in their quest in her own special way, but it's clear that she wasn't that invested. Instead, she chose to keep them at arm's length, taking advantage of situations should they arise and waiting for the right opportunity to make her score. It led to her often being the dissenting voice, and when Barrett shared everything that had happened regarding Coral, Yuffie showed zero sympathy, criticising him for trusting Shinra. It was callous behaviour, but the mere mention of Shinra made her blood boil. Still, Barrett's story did at least give her some perspective as to what might have happened had her father chosen to trust Shinra instead of standing his ground and fighting against them. As the quest continued, Yuffie continued her deception, biding her time as the party faced some serious trials, and when they decided to head to Wutai, she realised the time was now right to enact her plan. After the party were distracted by a Shinra ambush, Yuffie seized the moment and stole almost all of their materia, and as the group searched for her, she continued pestering them, stealing anything useful that they might find along the way. But when Cloud spoke to Godo as part of their search, it led to an outpouring of emotion from Yuffie. For years, she had been frustrated by her father's unwillingness to restore Wutai to its former glory. All she saw was someone who had been beaten down by Shinra, and was now afraid of them. For the longest time, she had chosen not to confront her father about this, at least not in a direct capacity. But when she heard her father ask Cloud to leave just because he thought they might be in trouble with Shinra, Yuffie was disgusted. Godo attempted to defend himself, alluding to everything that had happened throughout the war and then with Avalanche, and he also attempted to assert his authority. But it was too little, too late. He had lost the respect of his daughter long ago, and Yuffie had no issues with telling him that he was a sad excuse for a father. Following this argument, Yuffie continued to evade the group, but after being captured by Don Corneo and then rescued, Yuffie decided to return the material that she had stolen as a way of saying thank you. She then turned her attention to attempting to clear the fabled pagoda, something that had not been achieved for some time. It saw her defeat legendary Wutai warriors such as Chekhov and Stanev, for then squaring off against her father. Yuffie fought hard, and in doing so she earned the respect of her father, and it led to Godo sharing with Yuffie the truth behind why he had let the Star of Wutai fall so far. After being defeated by Shinra, Godo realised that even though they still possessed a lot of strength, what was the benefit of using that strength for anything other than the defence of their homeland? They could seek revenge and attempt to assert themselves, but then they would be no different from Shinra. Still, after seeing what Yuffie had achieved, Godo resolved that this approach had been wrong, and he encouraged Yuffie to venture out to join Cloud and to show the world the strength and determination of a Wutai warrior. It was a gesture that Yuffie appreciated, and even though she did still try to play a few tricks, her intent to try and save the world was true. Not long after, Yuffie was able to deliver, as she helped to defeat Sephiroth, but that was only the start of her adventure. With no real need for their materia anymore, the group entrusted most of it to Yuffie for safekeeping. She then returned to Wutai with her hall, hoping that her deeds would make her a legendary figure in the community. But she was dismayed to find Wutai in ruins, a consequence of the livestream passing through to prevent Meteor Fall. 
Yuffie did what she could to help, but to make matters worse, geostigma was starting to spread amongst the survivors, and fearing that Yuffie might be a carrier, Godo quarantined her within their home. It was a foolish decision, as he must have known that Yuffie would escape. She would not sit idly by while something threatened her home. With the aid of her childhood friend Yuri, Yuffie started to investigate some of the caves that had appeared during the livestream bursting out of the ground, and it was in one such cave that they saw what they were up against, as they encountered a mysterious black liquid. As time passed and the sickness spread, Yuffie stayed to care for her people, but when she learned that Sib was attempting to find a cure, she decided to tag along. It saw them search numerous caves, but even though they found nothing of use, at least they were able to reconnect. As the geostigma crisis came to a head, Yuffie grabbed the Hall of Materia from Wutai and ventured to edge with Sid. She then took part in an epic battle against Bahamut Sin before watching Cloud defeat Sephiroth yet again. But even though this should have brought about a time of peace, the land had been shattered and was in need of help to return to its former glory. Keen to assist, Yuffie joined the World Regenesis Organization and she was placed in charge of espionage and intelligence gathering. With the emergence of Deep Ground, this turned out to be a crucial role, and it enabled Yuffie to save Vincent from certain death at the hands of Rosa the Crimson, a member of the Sviets. When she then brought Vincent back to the WRO headquarters, the two struck up an unlikely friendship. During the Battle of Midgar, Yuffie then fought alongside Vincent, but as they ventured deeper and deeper, they encountered Nero. Even with all her trickery, Yuffie was no match for his power and succumbed to the darkness. It was fortunate though that Vincent was immune to such tricks and was able to return the favour, saving Yuffie from the peril that she faced. After recovering, Yuffie returned to Edge, hoping to check in on her friend who had just saved the world, but Vincent was nowhere to be found, and Yuffie was left to ponder what her next adventure might be. And that concludes the story of Yuffie Kisaragi, one of the supporting protagonists from Final Fantasy VII. Despite almost being cut at the last minute, Yuffie was able to make a lasting impression thanks to the efforts of Jun Akiyama, who was an event planner on Final Fantasy VII. They had developed a strong affection for the character, and when the decision was made to have Yuffie appear as an optional character, Akiyama wanted to make her brief appearances as memorable as possible. It resulted in a character who, in some ways, was quite polarizing. To some, she was a very annoying individual who was nothing but a source of frustration. But to others, she was cute and endearing due to her persistence and dedication to restoring Wutai, even if it gave her a warped perception of reality. What's interesting about Yuffie though, is that she represents one of the few instances where a playable character actually gets to have a meaningful interaction with one of their parents. If you look through the ever-expansive list, many of the main characters have ended up as orphans or their parents were just not spoken about. With Yuffie, we got to see the struggles she faced by not only having her homeland have its identity stolen, but by having her father become a shell of his former self following the humbling defeat they suffered. It led to a huge disconnect forming between the two, with Yuffie frustrated at her father's perceived weakness and Godo frustrated at his daughter's perceived petulance. But after they were able to somewhat resolve their differences, they managed to at least find a shred of respect for each other. Within the Final Fantasy VII Remake, my hope is that they're really able to build out Yuffie's character arc, integrating her into the story in a more meaningful way. We know that within the original game, had they not run out of time, that was the plan, and I can't wait to see if they attempt to resurface some of that cut content, as it's a story arc that just doesn't get told that often within the Final Fantasy franchise. But yeah, that small analysis out of the way, that marks the end of this Final Fantasy VII Origins video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, share the video around to all the people you know who love Final Fantasy VII, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure to let us know in the comments what Yuffie means to you as a character. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. A big thanks as always to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, and of course, a big thanks to all of you for joining me on this deep dive into the lore of Final Fantasy VII. I hope to see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.